Welcome to the Safety Works Training Institute's presentation of an introduction to bloodborne pathogens. Our objective today is to define bloodborne pathogens, list protective measures for contact with blood and other potentially infectious materials, and how employers are required to protect employees from bloodborne pathogens. Bloodborne pathogens are microorganisms in human blood that can cause disease in humans. These diseases include hepatitis B, hepatitis C, and HIV. There are others, but these are the three most likely transmitted in the workplace. Not only are we concerned with blood, but also other potentially infectious material, also known as OPIM. These include any body fluid contaminated with blood or cannot be identified, such as saliva in dental procedures, joint space fluid, body cavity fluid, lung space fluid, birth water, vaginal secretions, semen, and human tissue, living or dead. The standard only applies to employees who have an occupational exposure to blood or OPIM. An occupational exposure is defined as the reasonably anticipated exposure to blood or OPIM that may result from the performance of an employee's duties. Professions likely to have occupational exposure include, but are not limited to, healthcare workers, law enforcement officers, emergency responders, morticians, first aid personnel, corrections officers, and laundry workers for healthcare or hospitals. As you can see by the picture, blood or OPIM may enter through the eyes, nose, mouth, open cuts or sores, and under the skin from a needle or other contaminated object that punctures the skin. This is called an exposure incident. Now you cannot get a bloodborne pathogen exposure from casual contact. Typical exposures in the workplace result from accidental puncture and cuts with a contaminated object, such as a needle or broken glass. Maybe blood or other potentially infectious materials splashed in your eyes, nose, or mouth. And you can also potentially be exposed through not using safe work practices that we will discuss later. Now it is important that no matter who you are, you always observe universal precautions. Universal precautions means that you consider all human blood and OPIM as potentially infectious and therefore take precautions to protect yourself when occupationally exposed. Hepatitis means inflammation of the liver. Hepatitis B and hepatitis C are both liver infections caused by different viruses. They may begin as short-term infections resulting in flu-like symptoms, such as fever, fatigue, loss of appetite, vomiting, abdominal pain, dark urine, joint pain, and jaundice. Symptoms occur on average two to 12 weeks after exposure. People may not know they've been infected and will then be able to spread the virus to others through exposures to their blood. For some people, the virus remains in the body and causes chronic or lifelong infection, which may lead to liver damage, cirrhosis, liver cancer, and even death. There is a vaccine for hepatitis B, but not one for hepatitis C. The hepatitis B vaccine must be offered at no cost to all employees who have an occupational exposure. You may refuse the vaccination, but may change your mind at any time. You may also receive, receive it after an exposure. HIV stands for Human Immunodeficiency Virus. This virus weakens a person's immune system by destroying important cells that fight disease and infection. You may get swollen lymph nodes, fever, rash, muscle aches, night sweats, mouth ulcers, fatigue, and chills. Now, employers with employees who are occupationally exposed to blood must have a written exposure control plan available to employees. This plan must include the job classification of exposed employees, methods to inform employees of hazards, how exposures will be minimized, what to do in the event of an occupational exposure, the name of your healthcare provider, how employee medical records will be maintained, and your organization's hepatitis B vaccination policy. 
Protecting workers from an occupational exposure is extremely important for all employers. The healthcare industry has the highest level of exposure and therefore many products are available to eliminate, isolate, or reduce exposure. The highest level of protection is to offer engineering controls which remove hazardous conditions or place a barrier between the worker and the hazard. Many of these controls in healthcare are to protect workers from sharps. A sharp is defined as any medical instrument that is sharp or may produce sharp pieces. Healthcare employers must work with employees to research new devices each year to offer protection against occupational exposure, such as those that are pictured here. Now you may be occupationally exposed to blood when you clean up blood or other potentially infectious material. Follow your employer's procedures on how to do so safely. These procedures will include things like blocking off the area until the cleanup and disinfection is complete. Do not allow visitors or unprotected staff members to access the area. You will be required to put on personal protective equipment as determined by the level of hazard. You'll wipe up the spill as much as possible with paper towels or absorbent materials. You will need to have biohazard waste disposal containers handy for all disposable contaminated waste. If you have glass or sharp objects as part of a spill, be sure to double bag or place in plastic containers with covers and rigid sides. Do not pick up glass or sharp objects with your hands. Use a brush and dustpan and or forceps or tongs. Gently pour bleach solution, one part bleach to 10 parts water mixed fresh onto all contaminated areas. You may also use a viral disinfectant. Let the bleach solution or the disinfectant remain on the contaminated area for the contact time required. Bleach and water have a 10 minute contact time. Other virucidals may have varying contact times. Please make sure that you clean all non-disposable materials such as mops, brushes, and rags by disinfecting them, saturating them with a bleach solution and allowing them to air dry. Remove gloves and place in the garbage bag with all the other contaminated materials. Double bag and securely tie them up and discard immediately. Be sure to thoroughly wash your hands with soap and water. Your organization may have other work practice controls to reduce the risk of exposure by altering the way in which a task is performed to make it safer. Work practice controls may also include policies such as no eating, drinking, applying cosmetics, or handling contact lenses in areas where exposure to blood may occur. In the photos below are work practice controls for one-handed needle rescooping. Uh, one-handed sheathing of needles and the proper protection of contaminated laundry through color-coded or labeled containers. Personal protective equipment, also known as PPE, is the last line of defense when all other protections have been utilized. PPE is only a barrier between you and the hazard and should PPE fail or be used improperly then you may be exposed. Depending on your occupational exposure and the amount of blood or OPIM you may be exposed to and in what forms, such as splashes or spills, these will dictate the type of PPE required for each task. Your employer is responsible for determining and providing the PPE for you to perform your task safely. Now, whether treating someone or cleaning a spill, gloves are a necessary protection against blood entering through cracks, cuts, or abrasions in your skin. You will need to know how to take contaminated gloves off without contaminating yourself in the process. This is something you should practice ahead of time. Remove your gloves over trash receptacles to be sure not to splash and create a bloodborne pathogen spill in the area. This is also a great time to ensure that gloves are neither too tight or too loose. The number one form of infection control is hand washing. 
All facilities with occupational exposure to blood must provide hand washing facilities. If hand washing facilities are not immediately available, such as emergency responders, then hand sanitizers may be used until hand washing facilities are available. Although gloves are worn as protection against bloodborne pathogens, hands must be washed after removing gloves when exposed to blood or other potentially infectious materials. All employees whose job classifications are listed in the exposure control plan must be trained. The training must include what's in the exposure control plan. It must be interactive so that you can ask questions. Particularly important is to know what to do if you are exposed, how to report it, and where to go. Also included in the plan and your training are the engineering controls, work practice controls, and personal protective equipment you will be expected to use. You should be trained prior to performing any tasks that involve occupational exposure and every year thereafter. For more information, please contact us at SafetyWorks, www.safetyworksmaine.gov. Please join us for other safety and health topics available at that site and at our SafetyWorks Training Institute. Thank you and have a safe day.